Now that we have introduced you to the concept of base and exponent, let's start working with them. It's important that we have some fun. Now that we have a new object, we know how to read it, we know how to interpret it. Let's see how we can have some fun. So clearly, if you have a new toy, you have to play with it. So how do we play with it? So if you have 2 to the 3rd and 2 to the 4th, a mathematician, when they encounter a problem which they have not seen before, they go back to the meaning of the symbols to see if they can go back to the basics and figure things out. So we know 2 to the 3rd is 2 times 2 times 2 3 times. So this 2 to the 3rd is 2 times 2 times 2. This 2 to the 4 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 multiplied 4 times. Oh, look. Look what we have here. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 twos multiplied together. So do you have uh, something that you can write this precisely as and not have to write all the 7 twos? Good. So that means that this is 2 to the 7th power, right? And so how did we get the 7th power? We had the 3 twos from the first uh, base and exponent and 4 twos from the second uh, base and exponent. So that's how we got 2 to the 7. Isn't that fun? Uh, you might be wondering, this is not fun, but it is fun and exciting to see how once we understand base and exponents, how we can do other complicated things. All right, so do this one on your own next. See if you saw a pattern or what happens. All right, here we go. 3 to the 7 power because, again, we got 2 3s and 5 3s multiplied together. So as a mathematician, uh, when you work with things like that and make it look like fun, you don't have to memorize any rules because you can always fall back to your basic understanding and get your way out of any situation you're stuck in. So mathematics doesn't just teach you the facts that are in mathematics, but it teaches you problem-solving skills that you can apply other places, in other parts of your life, and in other disciplines. What's the tool that you got here? That when you see something that you do not understand, don't just judge it and say, ah, oh, I can do this. Instead, say, oh, what fun. Let's see, it's a challenge. Let's figure it out. What do I know about pieces of it? And can I put those pieces together and have a complete picture of what I got? All right, so now, what do you think the answer would be to 4 to the 22nd times 4 to the 100? Can you see that? All right, let's take a look. So if you have 10 to the 2nd and 10 to the 4th, you're going to end up with what? 10 to the 6th. So does that help you? All right, take a look. So we're going to have 4 to the power 122. Why is that? I'm not going to be writing it 122 times like that. Do you want to write it? So I should be able to do it in my head. I have 22 fours here and 100 fours here, and 100 plus 22 is 122. So again, you can see, if I did not know how to add 22 and 100, I would be stuck. So everything that you learn from basic counting comes into play in mathematics. You are using it many different places. So if you don't remember what you did uh, in kindergarten, it's going to come back and haunt you. And that's why we're presenting all the way from the beginning. So if you don't remember some of it, just go back and watch other videos. All right, let's try something more fun. 10 squared raised to 4. So remember, 4 is the exponent, 10 squared is the base. So 10 squared, 10 squared, 10 squared, 10 squared. Now what do you think? Each 10 square is two tens multiplied together. So we're going to have four groups of two tens, which will give you 2 to the 8 because 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. And so 10 to the 8 is what you got. What patterns are you noticing? You can notice that when you have same base raised to different exponents, and you're multiplying, you're adding the exponents. Don't just memorize the rule, add exponents, when you have base multiplication. It is important you understand why, because then if you forgot the rule, it's OK, because you know what it means, and you can get your way out. What does 10 to the second to the 4? What do you do with these powers to get the 8? You have four groups of 2, so 4 times 2, which is 8. 
So <clears throat> here are some other things that we can look at them. For each of the problems, use the pattern you just observed and see if you can rewrite them. So go ahead, pause the video and rewrite it. All right, so you're going to end up with 5x plus 7 to the power 11. All right, let's do the next one. Let's see what you get there. Did you get that? First part, 3 to the second and 3 to the 5. There are seven threes in there in the bracket. Now what? Now you have 3 to the 7 twice. So that will end up with 3 to the 14. So this is how you can start to manipulate more complicated objects. But the goal uh, is not to get the most complicated problem solved, but to understand all the itty bitty pieces that the uh, big complex problem is made up of because if you understand those then you can put them together and solve any problem. Alright, do this next one on your own. And remember, do not judge the difficulty level of a problem just because of how it looks. So now what? Good. Alright, can you see why that is? You have, This is a base, same base. 10 of those and 7 of those. So there's 10 of these multiplied together times 7 of these multiplied together will give you 17 of the bases multiplied together. So it's base to the power of 17. All right, how about that? Does that make sense to you? And that? So it doesn't really make any difference whether you have this object here or that object here or that object here. It's simply base to exponent, base to exponent, and how to put them together. If you understand that, you are in really good shape. All right, now here is tricky a little bit. See this negative sign, what do you think? Does it belong to the base or would you read that as negative of base to the exponent? Make sure you are taking the time to read and write correctly. All right, so parentheses simplified first and now simplify the outside. Remember c to the fifth to the power four, that negative is on the outside, so negative of c to the fifth raised to four power means c to the five multiplied four times which will give you c to the twenty and the negative is on the outside. So observation that we have so far is what? That a to power n times a to power m equals a to power n plus m. a to power n raised to power m is a to the power n times m. You multiply the exponents here, you add the exponents here. It is important that you don't just memorize a rule but you understand how it came about so you never have to remember anything. You just have to know what base means and what exponent means and you'll get it. All right, fill in the blanks below. Again, remember you're going to use your logic for all of these problems except for A. There are many possible answers so we will share some of the answers and then just know that there are several answers possible. Pause the video here and then we will come back. Assuming you have come back from pausing the video, given that the right hand side is fixed, our base is going to have no choice. So here we have in part a, a to the 6. So the base here is a, which means here the base will also have to be a. And then the power has to be 4 because 2 a's and 4 a's multiplied together will give you 6 a's multiplied together. So remember our product rule. So a to the second and a to the four will multiply to give you a to the six. But on b through d, you can see that since none of the exponents are fixed, you have multiple choices. So for example, base is going to have to be negative five in b, but the exponents I can choose once I fix one number, the other number will have to be so that they add up to seven. So that will be six then, I can also do 2 or 5, lots of possible answers. So this 
kind of problems will develop your growth mindset and that allows you to solve problems that you have never seen before if you cultivate this kind of thinking where there is no one fixed answer. All right, what do you think? In the next one, the base, you don't really have a choice because the base here is 2x plus 4. So 2x plus 4 base for both of them. The blanks, lots of possibilities. So what if I pick a 1? Can you think of the other exponent then? It will have to be 6. In the last one, base would have to be a quarter. And exponents, again, lots of possibilities, 4 and 5. So here's a question before we do the next section to think about, hmm, if I can just have to follow the rule that they have to add up to 9, and I'm saying there are many possible answers, can we possibly look at integer exponents and not just counting number exponents? So in other words, could I have 0 and 9? or negative four, and if I pick negative four, remember whatever number you put here, total has to be nine, so I would have to have 13. Is that a possibility? Mathematically speaking, why not, right? I don't know, we don't know what negative exponent stands for. So we're gonna to have to play with it, explore with it, and see if we really wanted to play with it and have negative exponents, what should the negative exponent stand for? What would it be its meaning? So think about that before you continue on to the next lecture.